So this is the battery balancer. It is how you add a second battery. It basically splits the battery to a parallel connection, I believe, and uh, creates two connections for your battery and this plugs in the controller. Usually there's labels on these, but this one doesn't have it, but you cannot mess this up if you're only putting two batteries on your bike. Uh, the XT60s that are like this with the male end, they are for your batteries and this one goes to your controller with the female end. Pretty simple. And I'll show you how to install that today. And then this is the second charger, I believe. I didn't know if it came with one or not, but yep. So you will have two chargers with your dual battery e-bike, which is awesome. Let's see, this is the same charger that comes with the bike when you buy it. So it's nice that they provide two so you can charge both batteries at the same time. And here's the second battery, 60 volt, 20 amp hour battery, which equates to 1200 watt hours of power. Uh, we have two of them now for our power goat and we'll install it in this video and do some range tests and speed tests and all that. All right, we're gonna be installing the second battery on the power goat version two today. So we got the battery over here with the plate this gets mounted right here and we're going to take all four of those bolts off and this gets mounted to all four of those slots and this allows some adjustment so when you get it installed you can slide it up or down and get it in the perfect position. Then this cord on the bottom of the plate is going to go down here. If you see this cable wrap right here. Uh, we'll just kind of push this out of the way and stick this yellow connection through that hole. I'm going to grab my hex headset and try to figure out what uh, size we need. So I'm going to use my power drill for this, but you can certainly use the tools that came with the goat to make this install. Uh, I just want to make it a little bit faster. We're going to take our four millimeter hex head and then we're going to grab our adapter here and we're going to put this on my drill. So we're going to take our four millimeter hex head and pull off these bolts. And then we'll do the same thing. We're gonna have to pull off the bolts on the seat. And we're gonna take this, shove it down through the frame here. in between that wire loom and we can tidy this up later when we get it all done but for now and we'll pull that cable through and then we'll get our battery plate on and situated that's that so then we'll run our cable up through behind the frame here and we'll make it tidy and get it nice and zip tied and we'll shove it through the hole and get this installed. So the seat is mounted with some screws up underneath. So you'll need to take these out. There's one in the front, two right here, and then two more in the back. Screw number two. Oh God, I can't get to this one now. Uh, we're gonna have to remove this battery real quick. Now we should be able to get to that last screw here. Well, not the very last one, but... There we go. Last two screws are up underneath the back end. And uh, they're right here. There's one there. And there's one right here. And we're just going to remove those now. Now we can take the seat off. And then here we are. This is where the controller is located right under here. Now one thing I would like to mention is the way they have this wire routed, this is pretty sharp metal here, so they didn't do a good job of protecting this cable. Um, all the cables are touching this metal here, which eventually would probably cause these cables to short out. Um, and these are your phase wires, so that's kind of dangerous. We're gonna try to fix that and make it look a little better. Uh, we may be doing some drilling into the frame, I don't know. 
Uh, but we got to get this connection into this box so that we can put our battery blender and everything in here. It's not hard. Once we get this cable in, we should be good to go. All right, so here's the solution I came up with for the uh, PowerGoat second battery install. Now, this isn't probably the most perfect solution, but I'm going to run my XT90 connection right through here. Uh, there's a little crack between the seat post bracket and the box. So I was going to drill a hole. I'm probably going to fix this situation down here later. But for now, just so I can get this video done, you guys can come up with your own solution. I would recommend drilling another hole big enough to get your XT90 through here. But I think running it up underneath this bracket it's not going to be any problem i did send a video to goat power about this but i just wanted to make sure you guys were aware um, i would probably keep an eye on this and maybe uh, wrap more wire loom around these wires and stick it through and protect it or take it out and redo this whole thing here and make it a little bit better uh, this is pretty unsafe because it's metal it can wear these wires especially when things move around and it could cause an abrasion and cause the thing to short out so uh, i think it's important for everybody to know that needs to probably be addressed but i'll try to show you what i do to fix that later on in another video but for now we're going to bend this little box so that i can get my xt90 connection in let's see if that's enough all we want is to be able to get this cable up inside the box and i think this is going to work so what I did is I pried this while I pushed that cable through and it and it went right into the metal box where the controller is. So that's probably the best solution if you want to do something really quick to get it up and running. But I would definitely address this other issue quickly. So now we can connect our XT90 connection to the battery blender. And then what we'll do is split these two cables from the controller. So this one goes to your controller and this one goes to your other battery down through the frame, just the same way that we did with the second battery. So this will plug into the blender and it can only go in one way and the other one can only go in one way. So that's the other two connections that you're gonna use and just plug those two in and then you're set up for that and everything should be good. Okay, now that we have all the wiring in place, I just wanna make sure everything's good here uh, everything's up inside the box and we'll just want to get all these cables kind of secured so when you put the seat back on it doesn't really smash anything or cause any problems so uh, we're going to make this a little bit more tidy and then we're going to put the seat back on here we are we're going to go ahead and throw on the second battery that's pretty much all you gotta do right there and lock it in place and we'll go out and go for a ride and i'll show you what it looks like with everything put together. So I do have my second battery up a little bit higher than the stock one, so I might slide this down a little bit more, uh, which means I gotta go get my drill again, no big deal. But uh, let's power it up real quick. Make sure the second battery is on, and we're gonna power it on for the first time with dual batteries. And we are working. All right, that looks a little better. Now they're both evenly spaced. Looks great. All right, I'm releasing my first video today, which is the PowerGoat version one versus version two, which you guys will be able to watch after this one if you haven't seen it yet. But uh, this is the last video in the series that you're watching now. And that's the PowerGo V2 second battery install and test. So we're out on the PowerGo V2 with the second battery. I'm going off to take a picture of it real quick. When I was talking about the uh, suspension in my first two videos, I kept calling it 450 pound weight limit, but it's actually uh, 500 pounds. It's two 250 pound shocks in the back. So really I need to look for something uh, 150 for a replacement so two 150s which would equal 300 pounds to make the rear suspension a little bit more soft it's not very soft right now it's pretty rough actually 
but we have the ability to get a softer spring if we need to and we'll talk about that in a future video now we'll go out there after I get a little bit of 360 footage and we'll go see how uh, good this thing is now I did notice that in my review it was kind of hard to see up here in the video I kind of like lean on this bike because I'm scoot I scoot so far back uh, but I'll try to sit more upright so that you guys can see more things <laughs> kind of sucks I didn't realize that until it was too late but that's okay that's the nature of recording video now somebody asked a question about this bike being good in gravel or sand and it's not good in either of those these tires are really set up for the street now you just gotta take it easy that's all and nobody's coming so we might have the road to ourselves this way let's hope Now we rode this exact same path in both the videos, so you guys can compare numbers if you're really into that kind of thing. These are real world results. These are not on a dyno or anything like that. This is a 240 pound man on a dual battery PowerGo version 2. Now adding a battery is going to increase the weight of your bike a little bit, like maybe 10 pounds or so. I don't know how much the battery actually weighs, I should probably weigh it. But you're increasing the weight a little bit, so you might decrease the speed, but I don't notice that at all. It feels just about the same. I gotta keep taking my hand off the throttle to make sure I don't lose my wallet in my pocket and I'm wearing gym shorts so I just gotta be careful looks like I need to tighten up the display as well 44 miles an hour well that's the fastest I got it up to right there at that section yeah I need to I need to tighten these that's a simple fix, it's just two Allen keys. The corn is growing. It's so much higher than it was the last time I was here. Already. Pretty soon you won't be able to see anything on that side when you're on a bike. All we got is corn down here in the country. Corn, farms, barns, and horses. And goats. We got some goats out here. No, really, there's a little goat farm over to the left. But we also got some goats on the road, so here we go. Let's see what we can get up to. There's the horses. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's faster with these two batteries. No, like, I'm not even joking about that. Got a higher top speed, which makes sense. Hey, turtle. Yeah, I've never gotten a 43 there with a single battery. Now, I do have to mention this 
because I figured it out and I'm not the only one having this issue. The display, very inaccurate. You have to power off the bike, power it back on for the percentage to update. I don't know why. I would like to know why, but that means some of my tests might have been skewed a little bit. I guess I could go redo the test one day. Maybe I will. Now another thing I would like to address in the final part of this series. These are not toys. They are fast. They are dangerous. They are very sturdy and easy to ride. But don't let it fool you. 40 plus miles an hour is no joke. So... When you get your bike, take it easy. Especially if you're a beginner, definitely take it easy. This is not like electric XP or a, um, you know, a, a lower class, slower e-bike. This is fast and very dangerous. But what do I think about the dual battery upgrade? I think it's going to be a game changer. I think that it's going to be everything I wanted. I'm very, very happy with the setup. And I saw another YouTuber that had these installed. He had his battery backwards, so make sure you install it like this. Uh, the cradle is designed to be at the bottom position, so when you slide the battery in, it slides down and locks in place. So keep that in mind. You definitely want to install your batteries like this, where the handles are on the top. There's little handles right here, if you can't see that. Uh, but yeah, so... Love the setup. I think it fills the space in like I talked about. Um, you can definitely see like what I was meaning. I do want to find a bag here um, to fit in that space. I actually think I have a couple that might work. We are going to definitely accessorize this bike. So future videos, an accessories video for the Power Goat version 2. We're going to do more extensive testing in the next series of videos. Uh, where we try to try to you know just put this thing through the ringer we're going to be doing some maintenance stuff on here eventually so you're going to see maintenance videos i'm going to be swapping out these springs so swapping out the springs is going to be one of those things i definitely want to do and i've seen people put turn signals on their bikes already in the back that's that's genius i mean everybody uh that is already modifying their goats uh, I really like to see that. That's awesome. But yeah, turn signals maybe uh, in the back that stick out a little further so you can see them better. Uh, I do like this tail light, but like I mentioned in my video, it's not as bright as the other one. And I would have really liked to seen a brighter tail light. Uh, I think it's bright enough. I think people can see you. They're going to know when you stop. They're going to know when your turn signals are on. Um, but I do wish it was just a tad bit brighter and I think adding a couple of turn signals on the side like some of the guys in the group have done uh, sounds like a good idea now if you're not part of the goat power bikes owners group go check out the link in the description I'll also pin that as the first link in the top of the comment section so you can go find it um, go join the group if you have Facebook uh, we have a lot of conversations, lots of people modifying their bikes. Some people having some issues that we are resolving in the group amongst other places. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about the install of the second battery or if you have any questions about the Power Goat at all or any of the other bikes. I know a lot of people are waiting on their bikes. Once you get this thing, you're going to be so excited. And if you haven't picked one up yet and you're really on the edge, and I would buy it today the prices are going up there it's been said now adding a second battery does increase the price so keep that in mind it's gonna add i don't know what they have it listed at now but in the future that's also going to go up in price i'm sure so keep that in mind but accessories video is going to be coming up real soon i already have a few ideas of what i'm going to do 
Um, I do want to ask if you guys have any opinions on an accent color. Since this is such a new bike, I was thinking about going red. Everybody does black and red, but nobody's done black and red on this one yet that I know of. Um, I also thought about doing just black and gray, uh, or black and white even, um, or silver reflective rim tape, but maybe red. I do really like blue, as you can see all around my garage, all blue everything. But uh, I might just keep this stealthy and keep it black, and I might just put black reflective rim tape on it. I'm definitely putting my Redshift Arclight pedals on here which are going to be great for nighttime riding. Uh, I also am going to put some LEDs underneath, uh, maybe multicolor ones, just in case I don't know what to do for a color choice, but uh, maybe red too. That might be another option. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Stay tuned for more e-bike related content on the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.